the biggest advice you could give a new songwriter? Listen to all the music that you can. Yeah. I have a playlist that's just like music that's so good I feel scared. Neon Bridges to Holly Humberstone to Tom Petty to Chris Stapleton. I just love it all. I love Coldplay. John Guerra's album. Even like top 40 stuff. Like, why are we conversing over this? A great Selena Gomez song or a great Julia Michaels song. Woo! I just love a song. I'm just a song. I'm a song girl. Hey, everybody, this is Rita Springer. Welcome to another episode of the Rita Springer podcast and Worship is My Weapon. I'm so thrilled today because Jesse Early's here. Yay! You know, you have favorite people, Jesse, you're one of them. <laughs> You were one of them. I feel the same way. Jesse Early. Never way. met you until I moved to Nashville. But I can't remember when our first song right. Oh, yes, I do. Landslide. It was Landslide. Ah! That's ah! right. Ah! I had no idea. I actually didn't know who Hank Bentley was, and I didn't know who Jesse Early was, and they stuck me in there. What a great day. And, yeah, we found Landslide. That, Your love is like a landslide. That day was like a dream come true for me. Which is I'm so a diehard. Sweet. I'm a diehard Rita Springer fan. So sweet. So like, sweet. Die hard. <laughs> That's the best. You know, I still, I just am not the kind of person, I know people think I'm probably blowing smoke, but I don't walk into rooms thinking anybody knows who I am. And so when people say the sweetest stuff like you, it's just like, it it makes the right better because I was a nervous wreck because I knew you guys were good. Like they said, no, they're some of our best. So I was like, okay, here we go. And that was I somebody think, really... Uh, Pumping me up, that's for sure. Right <laughs> changed for me with you and Hank. Oh. When I look back at the last almost five years of my life here, writing changed for me when I started writing with, with you guys. Because up yes. to then for me, writing was still kind of a challenge. Totally. You know, and it was still, you know, I'd been on staff at a church and it was almost like a, sometimes a forced thing to do. Yeah. And... When I moved here and then was just like, I, we, we were on Capitol together. We were signed to Capitol. Yeah. You're still with Capitol. And I was signed in a publishing. So we were stuck in, in events and certain things the like best. that. But it was great <laughs> because writing, you kind of, you guys challenged me. You specifically, because you don't just write worship. That's true. And you've got your own little like. I have a couple things. Jesse and her tiny piano. Oh, <laughs> tiny keyboard. I, on, I should have brought it. I know. I should have brought a baby it? keyboard. I didn't Jessie bring it. Jesse shows up to rights with her little boozy gazo baby <laughs> keyboard. <laughs> it's a tiny Yamaha reface. Oh, I should like link it. I should link it. Do you have, in a, the little, don't you have <laughs> a little case for it? Do you have I have a, a case for you it. You have a little case for it. She whips it out. I don't play guitar. So I need something that's like portable that I can bring. It's with really me. the best. It's the best. The stuff that you can do on that little tiny pian piano is amazing. <laughs> it's, it honestly is pretty fun. It's <laughs> uh, super fun. Okay, so tell the viewers. The I don't viewers. Know about, I don't know about your history. I don't think I've ever. I, you're Charlotte. Okay, that's that's in there. It's in there. Okay, okay. Yeah, where are you I'm, from? I'm from Nashville. I'm a little Nashville unicorn. They call us wow, unicorns. Jess. My family moved here when I was little. So my parents did music and we moved here because my mom was doing music. My dad was a writer. So both of my parents are songwriters and my mom yeah, they're was a, a big deal. Your parents are kind of a big deal. Sweet. They're awesome. Your mom's but, kind of famous, right? Well, she had she was a country music artist for a while, which was fun. And um, so I grew, we had a studio in our house growing up. Like there were people coming in and out recording all the time. My parents were. Well, they're still doing writing, that, And though. they're still writing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they're still writing. My dad's worked for a few different. He's been a writer, producer, A&R. And now he has a company that. Yeah, that actually yeah, purchases buys, catalogs. Buys catalogs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great like, when you're a songwriter. <laughs> yeah. Insane. Yeah. Um, but so we, I grew up in Nashville and just grew up with a studio in my house and parents that played music and loved the Lord. And we went to um, a church downtown, which was really, um, it was like part of the Jesus movement. Like it Ooh. had started in the Jesus movement, wow. kind of. 
Um, and so like there was a lot, it's really interesting because there's a lot of like worship history yeah. at, that comes from that church. Like Amy Grant went to that church, Michael W. Smith, like all these people that wow. like on music row had like been at this church. So it feels really full circle to have kind of like grown up in a church where it's like all this worship music had come out of there. And now to be yeah, <laughs> kind of participating yeah. in that is just like really sweet of the Lord. Um, but yeah, I just, I grew up around music, <laughs> songs Man. and everything. I mean, did you feel, did you always think I'll, I'll probably just do Christian or were you like headed toward the country roads? Oh, I was full on like, I'm going to do pop music. I'm going to. So you always kind of knew Always that. knew I was going to do something with music. I don't ever think I thought about being a songwriter. I think I always thought about like, I have a good voice. Like yeah. I'll be a singer. I'll be an artist or something like that. But I never thought that I would be a songwriter, which is really interesting. <laughs> wow. Um, but so we, I grew up in the super sweet youth group, um, leading worship at church, always a part of church, yeah. always a part of worship, doing bands on the side and all this stuff. But worship was never a lane that I was like, Oh, this is this what is I want to yeah. do with my life. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> like you'd almost have to feel that for worship. Yeah. If you grow up in especially a musical family, like not just Christian, but yeah. like musically. And it wasn't as much of a genre, yeah. I guess, as it is now either. Yeah. Um, but so I started just writing around in college, I started writing my own kind of artist stuff. Um I was like, I'm going to do that. And I ended up going to college in North Carolina. Okay, So I where? went to Charlotte. I went to Davidson. That's, so that's why you told me this. So I went to Davidson. Because yes. I lived, I lived yes. like right down the street you lived right for eight there. years. <laughs> While you were going to college. While I was going to college. Yeah. So I was in North Carolina. That's where I met my husband. He's from there. Um, his whole family's from there. So we have a lot of like charlotte connections too so and it's it's just really cool but halfway through college i moved back to nashville because i was like i don't want to be at this liberal arts school anymore i want to like go do music <laughs> so i transferred to belmont um finished an english degree oh and, my um, gosh i know I have an english could you degree. teach english <laughs> I don't know. I have an ing it helps, I have a creative well, it, writing it helps, degree though. <laughs> it, it helps as a lyricist though. Yeah, it does. Yeah. There's so many things that are really similar, but um Hey everybody, this is Rita Springer. Thank you so much for coming in and joining me on the podcast here with Worship Is My Weapon. There's a lot of things I'm doing right now, and one of the things that we provide um, alongside this podcast is a newsletter that we do that we send out to those of you that are subscribed where um, I just answer questions and um, kind of give you information. And sometimes you guys are able to um, write in with questions uh, that you um, just are curious about. We love that. We love that interaction. I actually love to interact with those of you that um, want something a little bit more beyond the the podcast. So if that's you, make sure to to um, get our newsletter, sign up for our newsletter, subscribe to the newsletter and stay in touch with all the things that we're doing here on the podcast in that newsletter. So around then I had started, I had kind of my own artist project going that I was mm. writing for. Um, but co-writing was still really new. Um, and we had some friends, Tim and Angela Lauer, who Tim's like an amazing producer, keys player. He's played on everything. Um, and his wife, Angela, is a writer. And I kind of got, they were old family friends of my parents. Yes. <laughs> they, Tim had played on all the stuff that my parents had done. And so I got connected with them. And they were like, hey, do you want to start writing some like film and TV stuff with us? And I was like, yeah, sure. Like, that sounds fun. Yeah. So we started writing film and TV stuff like, when I was like fresh out of college um, and we started a little band called BN that we're still doing now. So there's, they're the so ones in that band with yeah. you. 
So that's how wow. we started being. And me and Angela write everything. Tim produces everything. And so we've had like all kinds of syncs and ads, but it's been, uh, it's been going for a long time and it's been so fun to be able to do that. Like, do you guys put out a project every year? We try, we're trying to like, we try to keep it coming as much as we can. So. Wow. Now for, for people that, I mean, the best part was a massive thing last year. Yeah. Virally. I mean, that was crazy. So the, the, um, for those of you that aren't on social media and you don't know this, um, this is the best part. This is the best part. That's Jesse. That's me. That's Dion. That's me. <laughs> we had some Swedish DJs that like one of the guys was like up late at night watching. We had a song on the original version was on this show called Working Moms. And he was up like watching of Working that? Moms. Yeah. That is hilarious. And he was up watching Working Moms and was like, oh, I would like love to remix this song. And anyway, so his band anime remixed the song and it went crazy crazy which we none of us had any clue it was gonna do that but it was the wildest yeah it was it was nuts it was the wildest thing yeah, i mean you know you know how i'm i'm trying to learn turkish and i watch turkish yes. television well Very some important. of the turkish stars that i follow on instagram like many of them were using it. i was like oh my gosh it's our it's in turkey <laughs> yes it's in turkey <laughs> Oh, it's so great. So, so that, that's where you BN. started BN. That's when we started BN Got was it. like kind of a, out of college. And um, we've just been doing that for a while, which has been really fun. So we do all kinds of film and TV stuff. Around that same time, hmm, I'm trying to think when this was. This was a little later. But kind of around the same time, I had been getting all of these prophetic words about worship and I was like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just like, no, right. Like oh. we'd have people come through our church um, and, you know, people would be like, who's the girl over here in the, on the, this row doing You're this? Like, no, and no, like, no. Not me, not me, not me, <laughs> not me, not me, not me. And it's like, there's worship, all worship and all this stuff. And you're going to write songs and do all this stuff. And I was like. There's oh, 10 other people yes, on my yes, road that yes. want this word. Like, <laughs> what, what were you scared about? I was really scared. I had all these really preconceived notions, I think, about what the worship industry was like. And to me, I was so hesitant because I was like, my relationship with the Lord, it's like something, it's precious to yeah. me. You know what I mean? And that was never something I was like, I want to really market this. <laughs> well, that's actually a gr really great way to look at that. <clears throat> you know what I mean? And yeah. I just. You were great with the lane you were in. Yeah. I was, and I was like, I'm going to write pop music. Like there's no way. And I also, I think the biggest fear is I didn't want to be stuck. Yeah. I didn't want to be stuck. Yeah. And I was like, Lord. So I really wrestled that out with the Lord. And um, really Michaela's mom, Shannon, I remember I'd told her, about this word and she was like what if this doesn't look like what, what you think, think it's gonna look like at yeah. all and I feel like so much of the time we do that with like prophetic words or when people kind of are like I see this all over your life we sort of have this idea that's <laughs> filtered through and mine was filtered through like judgments and pride and preconceived notions of that sort of thing but when she was like what if this doesn't look like you think it's gonna look like yeah like maybe I could do that. Maybe I could deal with that. So I mean, it's still something. That, it's a tension. There's a lot of tension in it. Like writing worship for me. I think. Which is interesting that I've never had <laughs> one ounce of tension writing a pop song or writing a country song. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of yeah, sad. I know. It's kind of sad because I don't think that's anything that is from the Lord. I think it's the tension of the system and the tension of religion. I think sometimes it just yeah. makes it feel like that. And just wanting to keep things pure. Yeah. Too. Like wanting to keep the main thing, the main thing. Yeah. And feeling yeah. like a real sense of responsibility too. Of like if I'm going to be giving people words to sing, I really want to do that well. Yeah. You know? 
Um, yeah, and that's good though for for worship writers yeah. even here. Please, <laughs> please do this well. And like, I feel like one of the things that I've loved about writing with you, which I, I told you a couple of weeks ago, was you just have this authenticity about you and the way that you write and the way that you talk to the Lord. And I just really love that. And I think that that's really missing in a lot yeah. of spaces. And that's kind of how I love to write and the stuff that's maybe a little off the <laughs> yeah. track. So anyway, I ended up was like, I ended up being like, okay, like, yes, Lord, like whatever this looks like, I don't know what this is going to look like. And I think I'm still unpacking and wrestling with yeah. those <laughs> yeah. words over my life, you know? I um, mean, you've done so much in the worship field is now. Crazy. Is it <laughs> is it a muscle that you feel like you've exercised to where you don't have almost that trigger of... Yeah, I think now I've really... I had to repent of a bunch of judgments, I think, that I had yeah. about, about worship music <laughs> and about the industry and about the people that are in charge, you know? Um, I met... So I ended up meeting Carrie Dolly around... Yep. I don't, when was it like six years ago now and we had a mutual friend she'd heard some stuff I was working on and was like hey could we go get coffee and me and Carrie went to barista parlor and I remember I was sitting across from Carrie and I had so much fear of just wow. worship and a Christian publisher and being stuck and all of this stuff. And like, she literally looked at me in the eyes and was like, did you ever think you'd be talking to a Christian publisher? And I was like, no, like I never thought yeah. I'd be talking to a Christian publisher. You weren't signed to any other publishing company no, at that I, this point. Is, this is my first, my first like publishing deal. But I met with her and I just felt so much peace. And it just felt like the Lord. And she truly is anointed. And yeah. that's what I've yeah, she learned is. to like, after I signed with them, the people who are working in that are these publishers, these labels, like there are people that are really prophetic. Yeah. That are doing that. Like yeah. the people on my public on our publishing teams, like your publishing team too. They're they're so yeah. prophetic in the way that they're putting people together and like mm -hmm. thinking about like yeah. what's the Lord doing. And so I think that I maybe didn't know that. I think I imagined it was a bunch of people in suits that really cared about money, but then it was, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. But and Carrie signed me too. Yeah. So it was, she's, it felt the same way. It was just like, incredible. she was after who I was. Yeah. Um, not what could I bring to the table, but who I was and what I felt about the Lord. Yeah. She's such a so champion precious. of yeah. people. And there's so many people that in, I think this industry that really are champions of people and really care about what the Lord is doing. Yeah, They really are invested in like, oh, if we put this person and this person together, like mm. I can't wait to see what God's going to do in that room. Yeah, the sweet you know? thing about like <clears throat> writing for, like being a staff writer for a publishing company is, you know, when the year starts out, you kind of have your dream rights. Yeah. So you, <laughs> you actually get to... They would give us these, you know, so these fun. things that just say, you know, what's your dream right? And you could just write down on there, oh, this person, this person, this person. It's so fun. And it is kind of fun because they do try to make that happen. They do. As best as they can, they try to make that happen. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you were outside the box, you yeah. know. But um, <laughs> but it it it's it's actually sweet because they will even say, I remember having conversations with Carrie where it was like, I don't know that you two would be great together. And because she knew the other writer yeah. and she knew me, but I didn't know the other writer. And so she's like, I don't know. I think that would be, kind of, and so she would be able to kind of like lead yeah, you into why or why not. Or I think you should be, you should do it with this person because this yeah. person's great. Some of the, I mean, that she, she put me with you and Hank. So Thanks, that's, Carrie. that's amazing. <laughs> but yeah, I, I never had any clue that I'd be, doing as much of this as I am now. Yeah, and you're doing it all the time. <laughs> all the time. How I'm many a days a week writer. do you write? I mean, I write in co-writes. I'm like three days a week usually, sometimes two or three. Three days a week. And then I'm how many of those momming. are still pop or how many of those are are <laughs> every week's worship? different. Um, 
a lot of worship, CCM. a lot of some pop stuff. And then I'm still doing BN, still doing sync, film and TV. So it's all, every week's different. I yeah. love it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I always joke, like whatever address is in my calendar, I'll just show up there. Like you could put any address in my calendar and I would just like <laughs> arrive to right there. Oh my gosh. Which is if you ever want to donate to the podcast and to um, ways that you can help support the ministry, um, we have a Venmo uh, attached to this as well that is with my nonprofit Wearing Justice. You're more than welcome to donate to that, um, which is greatly appreciated. <laughs> well, Lenny, but you got two and a half kids. Two and a half kids, yes. There's one baking in here <laughs> and you're done right Jess? Ah, this is done ski how last has one. it been juggling motherhood and trying to be a songwriter that makes money at being a songwriter it's hard it's really hard i won't say it's easy i mean it helps like my husband aaron he's like the best dad and he's really involved and um He's just incredible with the kids. So it's like, even today, I'm like, I have a thing. He's like, great, I'm picking up the kids. He's just like That's really so on it. My parents live here too, which is really helpful. And God bless parents stay out. Yeah, that's so good. You do, <laughs> you, you have good help. I do. I have a lot of yeah. help. And I think that's the only way I'm able to do any of this. Yeah. And thankfully, so many people are like so understanding too, like the people that I write with are mm. so gracious <laughs> yeah but it's wild being a mom and a writer and it's hard and there's a lot of days where I'm just like <laughs> yeah what are you most excited about because you have <clears throat> like your what are your biggest songs for worship that you're so proud of because they may not I mean I'm I mean, proud of your songs well I'm I mean, really proud of those no, I'm pr so I'm proud of the songs really, you've been writing I'm really proud but of like those. Sometimes the songs I'm most proud of are songs that nobody's even heard. Oh yeah, you know what I'm it's saying? Real. Like that for you? Like what is that for you? Are you? Are you? I know you've done a lot with Cody, haven't you? Yeah, we did nothing else. Me and Hank wrote with Cody, um, and that's just been such an amazing yeah. song to watch. Um, I got to do some stuff with Abby Gamboa yes. over the last couple of years. What song off a of Pure of that album of hers did you write again? I wrote a few. We wrote Pure. We wrote um, Moonflower, which is such an off the wall Heard song. About if you, a garden. Yeah, if you haven't heard that song, it's like Wah! it'll take it's you amazing. out. It's just so magical. Upton was on that with you, right? Mm -hmm. We wrote Dad song. We wrote. I helped them finish No Life Apart. I want to say there's one more. I'm trying, I can't remember. Wow. That, that, was so that I think, was my 2023 favorite album of the year. It was so good. Yeah, so that was really that. special. I mean, writing for your stuff last year. I mean, that was Ugh. just a highlight, like a huge highlight for me. So sweet. I think my favorite thing is getting to dig in with an artist. So it's like. The fun thing about that was it was like we'd write one and we'd have another idea for that and a different song in the in session for song, one. And yeah. it's like, okay, well, we're going to get together in a few weeks and we're going to write this one. Yeah. It was like so fun for me to be able to just dig in for a few days. Um, do you like writing for projects? I love it. Yeah, I love it. And I love it when somebody has a really clear vision. Mm -hmm. um, Anna Golden has yeah, a really clear She has... Yeah. Writing for her project was so fun, too. She had a PDF. Yeah, she came with a PDF. She came with a PDF, which I was like... Pretty impressive. <laughs> Pretty impressive. Anna with her PDF yeah. was so great. And, like, that was so fun because then I'm, like, as writers, like, I feel like our job is to serve. Our job is always to serve the vision. The the serve artist, the vision yeah. of the artist or to serve um, the vision of what the artist is trying to do. And so when like all you artists that are out there listening <laughs> like have a vision for what you're doing yeah. like we want to come alongside you and serve that and so that's my favorite thing to do even Abby's proud Abby had just like so much vision she's like I want it to be kind of minimal and like this and really pure and really just that kind of thing and um 
it's so easy to get behind it when there's vision. Your project, like, yeah. like it's called Fed by Ravens, and yeah. there's roadkill, and there's, <laughs> like, very, but there's a very clear vision, and that's what's so fun to get to serve and run with is, like, oh, I can help you. Like, I can yeah. help steward that vision. I can, like, go after this thing with you. It's really fun. There, There is, you know, when we talk about writing songs and, it's like you, you, as the artist, you have to actually gather around you people in your songwriting mm -hmm. journey. Because, you know, I, I was interviewing Natalie Lane and she was talking about how they, you know, she had 100 songs for her project. And I was oh, like, yeah. yeah, no, I don't think I'd ever do that. Um, <laughs> to me, that'd be so confusing to do it. Now, I, I think writing 100 songs is amazing, but for one project, yeah. I think that because I'm so specific you and I so come specific. in with such a vision for something <laughs> and it has to look a certain way, but you almost need to find the safe people yeah, and the safe spaces with, with those other writers that, you know, that one's going to bring this to the table. Yeah. That one's going to bring this to the table. And I think for me, maybe sometimes in maturity, you do that better, but I, I would love, you know, more young artists to really be aware of that and not yeah. just be like, okay, when you're, when you're, when it's your first project and they're just thrown with you with anybody out there, <laughs> you almost have to see what sticks. Like you do. And uh, this, this, I love writing with that person. I loved writing with that person. Not so much with these other, you know, and I think when you're a new writer, that is really important to just yeah. like, just try it, try yeah. a combo. If it doesn't, if that's not the right combo, like move on, like keep going. Like honestly, when you're starting out, one of the best things that um, Tim Lauer told me, we went and got coffee right when I started writing and they made me a list on a napkin. <laughs> and one of the things that he wrote was quantity over quality, which was counterintuitive Whoa. for me, but that's me as a young 20 year old yeah. artist. He's like, just write, get it all out. Don't overthink Good, it, finish yeah. it call it done, move on, move on to the next thing. Cause as, as new writers, I think when you're a new songwriter, when you're a new artist, it's really easy to get so obsessed over those little things. So it's like for Natalie, I'm like, that's amazing. Like yeah. write a hundred songs, like, and see what sticks. Like when you're finding your voice and you're finding what you <laughs> like, like that's, and you're in that season, like do it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Just finish stuff, keep going, and then kind of go back and analyze later, like what feels like this feels like me, and this really feels like me, and this feels like me. But and yeah. when you're signed as a writer or you're really doing it professionally, I think the heartbreak, if there's any heartbreak, it's a, it's a you live with that heartbreak. Is that the those Dropbox files? Those Dropbox yeah. files that are full of these songs that you've written. Because, you know, when you're signed to a, a publishing company, you have a certain amount of songs that you mm -hmm. have to write during the year. Mm -hmm. And there's not a large percentage of that, unless you're, you're writing for, you're an artist writing for a record or whatever, that are going to be used. Yeah. And so if you're one of the writers in that hundred batch that she wrote, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's like hard, the yeah. chances of that song ever getting on a record is probably slim to none, but you can't almost think about it like you that. You have to think about it like about that. it is it's a muscle that you're exercising and just keep them in that beautiful Dropbox folder and go back and listen <laughs> to them occasionally. So they get some air, yes. you know, I've, I've, I've thought, man, I should just like, like do a Dropbox file um, upload every week, <laughs> maybe on YouTube. Just like this week, I'm gonna sing you a song this that I wrote week. in, in uh, An, 2013. An uncut, uncut gems. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which, and that's the thing. Some of them are gems. <clears throat> Some of them are gems. It's you go well. out of rights sometimes, and you're just like, oh my gosh, that was so great, you know? Yeah. And then the song never sees the light of day. That's the sad part, but. <laughs> It's also like, I feel like songwriting is a lot like farming. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. it's, I feel like as a writer, you have to get really uncomfortable or you have to get really comfortable with not seeing fruit immediately. Yeah. You have to get comfortable with like, there are seasons when the ground 
feels very fallow. <laughs> there are seasons that feel like digging and there are seasons where you're planting a hundred different things and just like waiting for something to spring up. And yeah, like that's what's so interesting. People are like, what have you been up to? It's like, I feel like a lot of the time I'm like, I don't I've just been like out in the field. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, work in the field. I just spread manure all over. <laughs> yeah, dig. like digging a hole yeah. and covering them up. And it's, it's writing, it's having that muscle, it's building, like working with people. And it's so fun though, because it's so funny. Like even something like Amen, it's mm. like, that's been in my, sitting in my phone for six months. Oh, yeah. Which is, and it's so fun now to see it like, yeah, even just the clips. Up. It's not just even the out, little just clips. the little clips. Yeah. yeah. Kind of popping up and it's like just the beginning of getting to see the fruit of that song. Yeah. yeah. But that's like as a writer, that's like the coolest yeah. thing ever. And when you're writing songs <clears throat> and you feel something different in the write mm -hmm. over something, but nobody else outside of those writers, nobody else is on is getting that memo. And then when you release it and all of a sudden you're like, oh, they're getting the memo. They're yeah. getting them. So it almost it's validates really the moment in the right where you're like, I think something's on this. This you is know? really cool. Yeah. Which that's what I love about um, just the Lord. Yeah. You know, I, so I, kind. whether you're writing for country pop, you know, rock, you know, rap, whatever, mm -hmm. or, or worship music, when you have the Lord, you still feel like there's something on this song. I mean, I've yeah. I've written, you know, I've written a country song that I'm like, there's something on this song. There so is great. something on this song. Yeah. And I don't know. I, I, I'm not going to try to verbalize it, but there is something on this song. Yeah. So it's it's that thing to kind of be like, okay, it's sitting in a Dropbox folder, but <laughs> I still believe something's on this song. So seeing something like yeah. that come about and having people be like, we love this song. It's like, I knew there was something on this song. It's so wild too, because I feel like songs don't have, um, I feel like we have a timeline in our own minds on like, this is, I don't know. I feel like song, like a great song doesn't have an expiration date. Yeah. You know what well, I mean? Yeah, like, clearly. Yeah. Which is just so incredible. Yeah, I was I was watching Netflix um, uh, uploaded just the making of We Are the World. Oh my gosh! And how that. they got all of those big names in that one room, and it was actually quite fascinating because they told the story, you know, of they were telling the story of um, how they wrote it, mm -hmm. and it's just I was laughing through the story because I'm like, oh my gosh, it when you're writing all the time. Those are the familiar stories where you're like, you don't know what you're going in for. Yeah. You know, you're trying this, you're trying that. The other person may be a bit distracted. You know, there's conversation <laughs> going on. And by the end of three hours, you either have something really powerful or something really engaging <laughs> or you just have a DoorDash bill. <laughs> a DoorDash <laughs> bill. From the oh right. Oh, my gosh. So, but it's... You never really know. You can have that feeling that something great's yeah. about to happen. Yeah, but it is. I and then sometimes amazing. it's like the opposite. Like I, we always talk about the. We've talked a lot about me and Cody and Hank have talked about the day that we wrote nothing else, and I've had a lot of people ask me, "What was that day like? Like that you guys wrote that song?" I was like, I don't know. It was just like a Tuesday, <laughs> and we all just like showed up, and you know, I don't, and even know what day of the week it was. And it was one of those things that was like, oh, this was like, if it, I, I was I'm like, if it was just for us in the room, that would have been enough that mm. day, which is so cool. And we had no idea. Sometimes the Lord breathes on something that you're completely not expecting. Yeah. And that's, I think, the part of being faithful and just showing up, you yeah. know, like <laughs> show up to the right, show yeah. up to the thing like you there's sometimes that we think like, oh, this is the coolest thing ever. And then other times you have no idea what the Lord's going to breathe on. So that's like. So good. One of the. <laughs> How is it for you? Because you mentor um, songwriters. A little bit. Um, I'm trying. Kind of on a one-on-one -on -one thing. <laughs> yeah. How, what is your favorite? Are you, do you love like the fresh, like just starting out songwriters? <laughs> Fresh you, meat. Yeah. Do you like the fresh meat of songwriters? Or, or 
is that kind of <clears throat> laboring for you to be bringing them into like, or is that kind of like a, it's fun. Yeah. I think I just love encouraging people and I'm like, so I'm a person that really feels passionate about people having their, their voice. I'm like you being authentic to you, authentic to what you're doing. Don't feel like you have to fit in a box, but I love passing on, <laughs> Like, I love helping if I can. Yeah. And so it's really fun to, like, hear people's songs and kind of sit there and be like, okay, well, if you just do this or this or this and watch the light bulb go off for them, it's just yeah. so rewarding. Yeah. And it's so cool, too, because people don't realize, I feel like I've heard this quote, that like, songs are whatever percent inspiration, like 20% inspiration and, like, 80% perspiration. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe there are some. I don't know. But I think in the beginning, for in sure. In the beginning, for sure. Yeah. I don't know what the percentage was, but I, I just love that it's like inspiration and then like perspiration, which is the craft yeah. of doing it. And there's, I don't know that, but getting to help people through just that, like, hey, actually, if you structure this here, it's going to be stronger. If you have a main you're able to focus in here like that's going to be great yeah cut that line and it's like the whole thing opens up for them and it's so incredible yeah yeah that's been my favorite thing yeah I mean really when I did the dive school and they would present their songs at the end of that week um those that really wanted the critique I mean we always talked about it like <laughs> songs are are your brand new baby truly and, they are. you know you know you're handing your baby off to somebody that that you don't really, you know, you, you think is great, but mm -hmm. they are coming back at you and saying, well, it's, it's a sweet little baby, but sweet little baby. there's a massive wart on that baby's nose. <laughs> you might have to have that removed. Oh you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it's like, it's my baby. I love the wart on my baby's yeah. nose, but you have to be willing to see <clears throat> the, the flaw in the song as the new writer. Oh, yeah. Um, and or, or we, we never learn. Yeah. I mean, I know it's brutal because I can remember handing songs over and, and <laughs> perspiring and and then being told, so you know, that, that this chorus wasn't this or this chorus wasn't this. And I, man, if I would have been the kind of writer back then that would have just taken offense and yeah. then, and then d destroyed everything I did <laughs> and not learn from that, yeah. I think the best thing you can do is take the criticism or the critique which is really just encouragement. Like it's it just, is, yeah. If it's from the right people, it's from the right people. It's it's <laughs> not it's not coming off harsh, but it's just coming off as yeah. You could do this and do this and do this yeah. and do this, and seeing them hear the difference in it's what incredible. they brought to the table, and then what you you you've asked them to do or what you've encouraged yeah. them to do, and they're like, oh, okay, okay, and you don't you don't want to write it for them, yeah, but. Um, I, we were all there once. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I, I remember just perspiring, just getting to the right. <laughs> Not That's even me. in the room. <laughs> That's me yeah. now. I mean, it's just like, oh my gosh, I, you know, I don't even deserve to be in this room. And then you get in super intimidated. If you walk oh, yeah. in and you have any kind of insecurity, it is, if you walk in a right or you start to write and your insecurities go into the right before you go into the right, Ooh. it's going to be disastrous. Yeah. And there are so many times we're both in rights with, you know, writers who you're just like, they reek of insecurity and yeah. they're just, they're almost shaking and they, they're not bringing anything to the table. And honestly, for, for those of us that are mature writers, some of that to me, you could see through that. You could be like, yeah. hey, just chill out. Like everything's fine. But some of that is if you don't feel like you're qualified to be in this room, only you're keeping yourself from being qualified into this room. Yeah. I can't qualify you for being no. in this room. The other writer, producer, can't qualify mm. you for being in this room. You have to qualify yourself. Stand straight, put your shoulders back, enter into the room like you deserve to breathe. Yeah. And that, Fake it till you make it. Fake it till you make it. <laughs> and and I think that's super hard for, it for writers. I mean, I still struggle with that. There's some rights that'll show up on my calendar and I'm like, oh, really? Okay. I'm like, you're well, a big, actually, we you're had a big one. girl. We had one last year. We did. We had one. And I was like, and you were like, like 
I was. I was so nervous. I was like, I was like calm down. I was like, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. You're right. It was right. a dream right. It was, it was a dream Yeah, it right. was a dream right. And I think that was why. And I was like, I don't want to. Yeah, I want to bomb it. You never walked into that right in any other way than you walk into in any other Thanks. right. And <laughs> it was, we got an incredible song oh, out yeah. of it. Oh, yeah. It was amazing. But it so is it one of those of things you have to remember. You have to remember, like, actually, I am here in this room for a reason. Yeah. I bring something to the table. Like, <laughs> I had to, like, pump myself up a little bit, but I've learned not to let that be the yeah. thing that is, like, oozing out of me. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, yep, we're going to do this. Yeah. It's going to be great. Yeah. Man. People are just people, too. Yeah. You know? It's just every day, every day, it's just every people. day you meet up with people. people. Hey, everybody, Rita Springer here. I want to keep reminding those of you who are looking for mentorship. I get a lot of emails about this. Um, a lot of people wanting songwriting mentorship or just um, worship leading mentorship. Uh, if that's you, what I'm doing right now is is a one on one um, type of program. So if you're looking for mentorship, um, you can go to the readyspringer.com website, just find the mentorship tab and pull that down. And there's information there on our four week sessions um, in a one on one program, basically, is what I'm doing. That's where I'm doing the mentorship. That's where, if you want songwriting um, uh, advice or you just want to talk through um, your positions at churches or your um, journey in the creative, whatever it is you want to talk about. We can talk about those things in that program. That's how I do this. We are not doing the dive school anymore right now, but I am doing these one-on-one -on -one mentorships. So check that out, ritaspringer.com, the mentorship program, summer 2024. I am offering a special as well. So if you want something that has a little bit of a financial break, this is the summer to do that. So check it out, ritaspringer.com. What do you think about... Um do, do you feel like new writers should be preoccupied with getting publishing deals? No. <laughs> okay. Tell us why. 100% no. I think if you're a new writer, you need to be focusing on writing as many songs as you can. I think you need to be focused on finding your voice. I think you need to focus on um, find your voice, but also practice some different things like play have fun write a few different genres like mm -hmm. put on your writing cat and write something that feels like if it's this lane or this lane or this lane like I feel like when you're a new writer that's the time to experiment and also look for what feels authentic to you start to notice I feel like it's um is it Chrissy Nordoff she has this like songwriter quiz. Yeah, yeah. That's like so great. <laughs> um, I don't know. If you don't. You don't need a songwriter quiz, but that's a great resource for new writers. Um, that kind of helps you identify like, okay, what are my strengths? Are my strengths more like this, or are they more this, or are they more like? It's it's just really helpful. So. Listen to all the music that you can. Yeah. Like, yeah, don't be a limit student yourself. of music. Yeah. Like, listen to something. And I have a playlist that's just like music that's so good, I feel scared. <laughs> it's called, like, I have it, my, it's called my good kind of scary playlist. And I put on these songs that just make me like so freaked out because they're so good and they're so inspiring musically lyrically yeah just melodically. like anything there might be like any yeah. kind of element on there and I just throw it on the playlist that I'm like this scares me a little bit because <laughs> I'm it's so inspiring yeah 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 you know what I mean it feels yeah like and when you get inspired you think you can write a million songs yeah you know I mean I I I don't think I've often said this, but I remember I had such an encounter in my writing um, or, or actually in my head, giving me permission to actually write more honestly. Yeah. When um, Alanis Morissette came out with the Jagged Little Pill record. Now, you know, yes. don't get yourself up in arms. 
Like it's a secular, obviously it's a mainstream record, but the way it's that amazing. she was so, and it was, it was so um, record breaking for so many different reasons, yeah. especially for women writers. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, I, I also think Glenn Ballard is probably one of the most insane producers yeah. in that, um, in that decade, but she was so honest in her lyrics. Yeah. And and I just didn't know people could have permission so to be honest. And and I'm not talking about like compromising stuff. I know she she, you know, she's she's a writer in the world, but it actually gave me permission to um put more meaning behind what I was yeah. saying and not just lightly tap into how I felt about the Lord, but to be honest, which yeah. you can see that more in my music nowadays. <laughs> Than, than ever before, it's true. you know, where yeah. it's just, I'm, I'm just going to be super honest about, about yeah. stuff. And there are writers that make you feel like, I mean, I remember listening to that album and thinking, I, I, I feel euphoric. Yeah. I, I feel like Incredible. I've just been given this, this, this go ahead to just write lyric, 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 mm. lyric, 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 lyric. And I, I, I wrote lyric after lyric after lyric. After, I've got, I've got a, a chest full of like lyrics that never, you know, I never recorded. Yeah. It was just such an inspirational, you know, That's moment amazing. because I opened up myself to listen to something that yeah. was just different, you know, different genre music. And it's you know, so powerful. So. Like we, I feel like I'll, I'm, I've like to be like a student of a song. So if there's a song that I hear that I'm just like, Oh my gosh, I will listen to it over and over again and I'll study it and I'll, think about it's just weird I'm like what's the beat doing what's this doing what's the melody doing what's the lyric doing so I think being a student of music yeah, and like yeah. just seeing like what inspires you I had a friend too that was um he his name is Mark Sibilia he's an incredible writer if you don't know him um he posted something the other day he was like I'm going on a walk through my neighborhood and I'm listening to Aretha Franklin's natural woman he was like I'm not a woman, but this song makes me feel something. <laughs> and That's he's amazing. like, it's like the that human feeling. I mean, like, you know, Carol King is an incredible songwriter and that human feeling, it, it transcends like Mark's walking down the street singing, you make me feel like a natural woman. And that is, so, so good. and I just was like, "That's that's so incredible. It isn't that like the spirit of music. Isn't that what a song's supposed yeah. to make you do is feel that kind of human spirit, whatever it is. Yeah. So, I mean, listen to some new stuff. Listen to stuff you maybe wouldn't think about yeah. listening to. Listen to just kind of see what hits you. And <laughs> it's so crazy. Justice and I, you know, we went, we, we had a little trip uh, uh, in December or early January and we were on the road for a little bit. And it was one of the best times because for the eight hours being in the car, <laughs> we just dissected records. It's so And fun. he just was like, you know, tell me about artists that you think I should I should know. And so I was like, man, have you ever listened to Alicia Keys? If you're because he's, you know, yes. he's rap. He's yeah. you know. And and I was I was pulling out these R and B artists, and it was such I wish I had videotaped <laughs> the last one that that um he pulled up was Whitney Houston. And um, take me out. Uh, and he never heard. Out. He knew who she was. He, he knew her name, but he'd never listened to anything she'd ever done. And so I was like, "Oh my gosh!" And so he was calling off the titles of the songs, and I'm like, "Go ahead, play this one." Um, Don't make me love you. And Woo. and he sat there. I wish I had filmed it. I mean, I was driving, so I couldn't. But I wish I had filmed his response. And and. When she was done singing, he turned around and he looked at me and I'm like, uh-huh. And he's like, I don't think I've ever heard anybody sing like that. And I'm like, well, she's one of the best. Yeah. And I'm like, now you know. Now, and he's like, yeah, that, he's like, that's life changing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's life changing. But here's, here's a young 19 year old rapper who is learning all of this kind of other genre in the R&B field yeah. from his rap. And and being fascinated by, you know, by female voices and male voices and, the you know, best. All, yeah, it's, it's the just, best. and it was so great to see the wheels of his mind turning as a writer 
and being like, I think that's amazing. You know, I think <laughs> that's so just great. so amazing. And we had we went and uh, driven to the Passion Conference. So he had spent three days listening to worship music, you know, <laughs> but it didn't matter to him. Yeah. It, he was like, you know, we talked about all the musicians and all the rhythms and all that kind of stuff. It was actually quite fabulous. That's to, amazing. You know, those are my favorite writers. Yeah. Those are my favorite writers is young writers who are so hungry to learn. Yeah. You know, and it just, that they just, they're just sponges and they just soak it all up. Yeah. It's incredible. So, That's the best. What's your, like, what is your um, favorite genre of music to listen to right now? Oh, no. You can't ask me that. Because you've got two kids. So I did know if it was <laughs> it's like. like Disney. Disney, yeah. It's like um, the Frozen soundtrack or. <laughs> like Spotify's Still? like Disney family movie hits is what our life is right now. Um, but I love everything. I'm just like a sucker for a good song yeah. and it doesn't really matter the genre. I love like, I love kind of like indie pop stuff. I also love like old music. <laughs> I love everything from like Leon to Leon Bridges to Holly Humberstone to yeah. Tom Petty to, like indie artists you've like never really heard of to like, I don't know, Chris Stapleton. Like I just love it all. Yeah. I'm, I'm such a song person. I love Coldplay. Like, and I love like, I'll, I'll find the song. I love new writers too. Like there's just people like John Guerra that I'm just like, I love Insane. John Guerra's yeah. album. Um, I'm trying to think who else. There's so many people, <laughs> so many great writers and I just love I don't know I just love a good song yeah I'm just yeah, a sucker so for great. even like top 40 stuff like yeah. I love like a great Selena Gomez song or a great Julia Michaels song yeah. like it's just it's I love to just be I love a song I just love a song I'm just a song <laughs> a song girl <laughs> oh my God. what would you say um what would you how would you What's the, the biggest advice you could give a new songwriter? Oh, my gosh. I think I would say spend time with the Lord and mm -hmm. learn who you are in the Lord. Learn what he says about yeah. you. Like, that is the being, having that connect with the Lord, being able to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, like, that is knowing your identity, I feel like is kind of like the foundation <laughs> that's like yeah. that's your spiritual element um you advice just settles everything else it settles everything else yeah. it'll settle any insecurity any like doubting yourself any like any career decision that you make i mean i have been so blessed to just feel the holy spirit on every single Step that I've taken yeah. in my career. Um, he'll help you be patient when you want to run and knock the door down because you're like, this is a great opportunity. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit's like, no, this isn't, it's a good opportunity, but it's not what I have for you. Mm. Like that, I think that is just so central. And that's been so central to me for I don't know, just being a writer and having long, being a person that wants to have longev longevity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but if you're a new writer, I would just say write. <laughs> don't be afraid to write. Yeah. Write every day. Um, I People are like, write every day. And I, I will say I'm not a person that writes every day in the traditional sense of I don't sit down and I craft a song every day, but I'm always like, I think of a title and putting it in my phone. Right, right. I'm listening yeah. to different things. Like I'm, I'm some seasons I'm kind of taking stuff in some seasons yeah. I'm outputting more, but I think if you're a new writer, like don't be afraid to write. Don't be afraid to experiment and play and have fun. Finish your songs, finish your practice, songs. finishing your songs, calling it done and moving on. You know, that's such a, that's such a great, um, Cause I, that's what I would say. I would say, finish your song, finish your song. And I, <laughs> I say that because I mean, I, I got a kid that's a writer, but a kid that's a writer that rarely finishes a song. 
And and you have we a, actually a friend that's a writer too that <laughs> has a phone full of unfinished songs. So. But part of it, I think, is for young writers, especially, is there is like this this tactic that the enemy would throw would throw at us that in finishing something, it's it's it keeps it from failing. Mm-hmm. And I know that with 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 my son, it's like that. And we had this big conversation. I said, Hey, you're going to finish this song. He wrote the song. I was like, you're going to finish the song. He's like, okay, okay. And then he started two other songs. So I came up upstairs and I, I laid, I was <laughs> laying in his bed and I was like, you're going to finish the song. I'm not leaving this room until you finish the song. And because I was like, you know what, buddy, I really feel like the reason that you don't is because you're so afraid of failure that that's your, that that's mm-hmm. your thing is like, Oh, you can say, Oh, well, it's not finished yet. Yeah. And that's why it's not good. Yeah. And, but if you finish it and then you let it, somebody hear it and then they say it's, mm-hmm. so I, I, it's like, try to finish what you start. Yeah. I think my other thing, my other piece of new advice, or I guess I always love to think about ideas like a tissue box like a Kleenex box, how when yeah. you pull out one Kleenex, like there's another one that pops up. So it's like, I think a lot of the time we don't want to call something done or we don't want to work on an idea because it's, we're holding it like so tight and so precious, which is like kind of an orphan mentality. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but like, just be encouraged that like, if you pull an idea out and even if it's not the best one, like right. maybe you're working on an, on a song and you're like, Oh, like this isn't the line, but like, yeah, like you got that out and maybe that's not the line, but like maybe there's a better line right here. Yeah. And I think just knowing that there's an endless source, like we have the creator of oh, the, the creator. universe, the most creative, yeah, <laughs> the most creative, like father, the most creative person that loves us. Like there's an endless source of ideas and we don't have to hold on so tight to the things that we think are so precious I don't know like whether it's a line or whether it's a song or whatever it's like the more that we can do this and be open-handed and keep digging like keep going yeah (laughs) I mean it is is crazy (laughs) it's like if you're confessing to believe in the god of all creation. All creation. All creation. All but creation. You're, I just but hit you my got mark. writer's block. All creation. You know? Yeah. And that's why I'm like, there's no writer's block. It's just whatever you got going on is just, you know, blocking yeah. up the well. You you you're bucked up right underneath the creator. Just turn around and say, I need a lyric. And he'll give you a lyric, you know. I mean, that's happened to me a million times, and the Lord oh, yeah. has come through just about every time. Oh yeah. Hey everybody, I want to tell those of you that are musicians and uh, specifically piano players about something that I've been using that really has transformed and changed a recording process for me. There is a company that I found that I've partnered with that has been uh, lending me this incredible piano bar is what they call it. It's from Earthworks Audio. You can find them online, earthworksaudio.com. And this is how this piano bar works. Um, As you can see, this piano bar fits inside of a piano like so. I think it would work for an upright as well. I have a baby grand. Uh, This bar just sits right in between um, the piano edges. And it has these two mics. It's a very, very sensitive um, piano bar. It just sits right in this piano bar. And then it just has this... um, connecting wire that comes out for all the plugins that you would need to plug into your interface. It's super easy. It's incredibly convenient. If you are an acoustic piano player, if you have a home studio and you're looking to mic an acoustic piano, Earthworks Audio is one of your best bets. Check them out online. Only other thing I think I would say is this has been when I knew we were I was coming today and I was like, this is the thing that keeps like running through my mind, which is kind of back to being a mom and being a writer. Um, but there was something that Alex Seeley said, and I feel like it's really easy, especially right now to get caught up in 
opportunities and um, it's really easy to get caught up in comparison and all that kind of stuff. Just like, what's everybody doing? What's all that stuff? And I've really, you, we kind of mentioned this earlier. You were asking how it is to be a mom and a writer. And I was like, oh, it's so hard. <laughs> like it's hard. But Alex had said this thing at church. Um, she said, your attitude determines your altitude. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and like I was waking up at my house every day like, so grumpy, so grumpy at my kids, so grumpy at Aaron, so grumpy. And I had like going on for like several months, just your attitude determines your altitude, your attitude determines your altitude. And so I would get up in the mornings, I'd go to the coffee maker, I'd make coffee where I really wanted (laughs) someone to make coffee for me, but I would go and make coffee and I would take it to my husband and I'd set it down and I really wrestle with that. Like, it's like, okay, like, great. I'm a songwriter and all this stuff. But like, what good is it if I'm a good songwriter and like a crap mom, like a mom with a bad attitude or a mom that like yells at my kids or a mom that's not patient or like a wife that's not, I don't know, that's not (laughs) working to communicate or being gracious and patient. So I think like having a good, I don't know, like, I think character is so much a part of, I don't know, I just, I think it's so important. There's, like, people are really obsessed with gifting. <laughs> but I think character. character is, like, I heard that saying, like, gifting gets you where you are, but character keeps you there, which is just so incredible. Like, gifting will open a door for you. Like, what's the first? Like, a man's gift yeah. makes way for him. But your character will keep you there, like, your attitude and that the attitude and like the hidden things and the things that nobody sees and the way you are at home with your family. And if you're patient, if you're generous and the best, I feel like the best writers that I know are it's like the most generous people. They have great families. Yeah. Like the people that I love being around, I'm like, you can tell that their attitude, their attitude's the same on and off the field. You know what I yeah, mean? It's yeah, that, that's really true. Like even you, it's like you're such a great mom. You're so generous. Like you're mm-hmm. how you have people over. You're so hospitable. Like you're taking care of needs when you see them. Like I think this that attitude, um, the attitude and the character, to me is way speaks way louder than the gift. Wow. You know, I don't know. That's that's amazing. I don't know. That was my only thing. That was my your only other thing. will get you through the door. Your character is what's going to keep you. Yeah. Wow, that's good, James. <laughs>